that idea I find in theopoetics that uh, it's you're, that the the idea of contradiction isn't negative. It's sort of engaging, and and it and it allows us to see um, where there's room for conversation, you know. And it lives it lives in that kind of liminal space where we don't quite know what to say or how to say it, but we're going to try as best we can, and then we're going to revise it later. Right, which is an extremely artistic practice, right? And that's the practice of the artist is making and then remaking and then, you know. It was interesting, I went to, um, I went to an exhibit of, of a retrospective of, of Rothko in Houston and um, it was wonderful to get to read about his process which I'd never read about so you know Rothko does these large scale sort of rectangular paintings that are just color right and they're ethereal and kind of eerie and they're really metaphysical paintings but the way that he got that look was through the, the obviously the play of light and color, the way he thinned the paint. Like he, so he'd paint the canvas one color, and he'd keep thinning it and thinning it and thinning it until it was barely there. Then he'd add another layer and thin it and thin it and thin it again, right? So it's layer upon layer upon layer upon layer to get this effect that is luminous and moving. And I feel like a person with a theopoetic posture looks at that and says, "Oh." Like I totally get the value in adding and then subtracting and then adding and then subtracting and I'm teasing out this thing that I know to be there that I can see, but I don't quite know what it looks like and it's probably gonna take me most of my life to figure that out. But I wanna figure it out in a way that's beautiful.